Alex Rubenstein joins us now on the issue of censorship. Alex, thanks for doing that. I think it is important that people realize the lengths and the extent, the depths that this uh, censorship has now reached. It's not just that quite well-known people are being, uh, like Asa Winstanley, for example, on this side of the pond, uh, who are literally being excised from Twitter, even though they could not be more respectable dissidents than Asa Winstanley with a huge following and great interest in what he has to say. But it's even now reached TikTok. Tell us. Yeah, well, I want to say that it's an anathema to what democracy is supposed to stand for, for a uh, for the state funded outlets of a party to a conflict to be universally banned from broadcast in uh, the countries that it's in conflict with. Right. So, I mean, we're in a situation right now where the West is at war with Russia using Ukraine and using foreign fighters as proxies uh, and banning all messaging from the Russian side from reaching uh, their domestic audience, for, for, from reaching those foreign audiences. And I just want to say that that straight out, it's a, an anathema to uh, what democracy is supposed to be. At the same time that Russia, uh, that RT has been banned from Telegram, uh, banned from YouTube, you can easily find neo-Nazi groups like the Azov Battalion uh, still operating on Telegram. Uh, C-14, a neo-Nazi gang in Ukraine, their leader, Yevon Kadas, he's still on Telegram. This is a guy who has not only met with President Zelensky, but leads an organization which has carried out pogroms against Romani camps in Ukraine. Um, and you can, I mean, all kinds of neo-Nazi groups, you can find them on YouTube, on, on Telegram um, today as they continue to fight against Russia and broadcast themselves on the front lines at the same time, Russia's state media outlet has been banned from these platforms. Um, so it just shows you how desperate uh, the West and its uh, aligned social media companies are to control the narrative. At the same time that these groups are banned, you can go to Twitter. And for the past two weeks, Twitter has had in its trending section uh, a post from an outlet called First Draft News. Um, this post is supposedly supposed to teach people how to identify misinformation coming from the war in Ukraine. Um, First Draft News is funded by uh, not only Piero Midiar and George Soros, but the Ford Foundation. So it's funded by the same people who have been uh, attempting to destabilize Eastern Europe with their money since the collapse of the Soviet Union. So not only are, are social media companies censoring alternative viewpoints, but they're artificially amplifying NATO-aligned viewpoints. It is uh, indeed extraordinary. Uh, it's uh, been happening uh, for quite some time. Even the president of the United States was uh, <laughs> yeah. kicked off uh, Twitter. Um, he, ha he was the wrong kind of American imperialist, uh, Donald Trump was. Uh, but I thought, you know, that TikTok was owned by China, that Telegram was owned by a Russian, not by Russia, but by a Russian. And yet censorship has reached both those platforms, hasn't it? Yeah, and and uh, as you as you alluded to earlier, the White House uh, brought in uh, a few hundred TikTok influencers, you know, these uh, Zoomers for Empire, as I like to call them, um, <laughs> to uh, <laughs> to pass on their messaging on the Ukraine war. And uh, basically, you know, I, I saw at least one of these videos, and it's you know some pretty young girl who is. Uh, trying to educate her uh, uneducated uneducated audience about um, about how Putin is really the one who's responsible for for gas costing seven dollars down the street. <laughs> That's extraordinary, I must say. I don't know how they'll take to it on TikTok. I, I myself, I'm on TikTok, and I, but I, you know, I don't do karaoke or dancing or anything on it. But I That's thought most bad. of the I thought most of the audience was on TikTok for something other uh, than uh, big geopolitical events. Was I wrong? Well, I mean, I'm a little bit older than the Zoomers, and I, I have to say I'm not on TikTok, but it seems to me that most of it is, uh, you know, flashy dance videos and uh, video game uh, videos, that kind of thing. Not exactly the 
the um, audience that you would expect for the White House to want to be persuading on uh, on uh, the geopolitics of Eastern Europe. Um, it, it, I think it shows the desperation uh, to control the narrative. Uh, on top of all the censorship, it, it shows the desperation. Um, and and it speaks to the fact that, frankly, for all the propaganda that we've heard since 2016 when Donald Trump was elected about how Russia's uh, you know troll farm in St. Petersburg uh, has complete dominance over the narrative in the United States, uh, Ukraine is winning this information war. Uh, Russia may be winning on the ground um, and, and at least uh, at least accomplishing the specific goals that it has set out to to do. But uh, as far as information goes, uh, this this is a victory for Ukraine. And even President Putin today uh, spoke to this issue and and reminded Western audiences that they were being lied to about Russia being responsible for the rising oil prices and the other pains uh, inflicted by the financial elite. Yes, uh, there's no doubt that uh, Vladimir Putin was supposed to control everything. Uh, the Russian uh, media was uh, supposedly uh, an existential threat uh, to the Western uh, audiences and the Western way of life, whatever that is. Uh, and uh, and it's all gone in a in 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 a in a whimper, really. No real fight has been put up by the public in your country or mine uh, in defence of free speech, which tends to make you think uh, that this was all just lipstick on a pig in the first place. Uh, that uh, our uh, professed belief in free speech, in free assembly, in democracy itself. Because, of course, without free speech, you cannot possibly have a democracy. It's, it's, uh, it's uh, an oxymoron. Uh, what does that tell you about the state of our people? Well, you know, I'd like to speak to that question with two, two examples. Um, one is myself. When I was with uh, RT, Back in 2017, early 2017, when Donald Trump was being inaugurated, I was arrested while I was reporting on protests against his inauguration. Uh, for doing my job, I was arrested, and it was a grueling experience. I spent 25 hours in jail. I was uh, hit multiple times by the police for doing my job with a press badge, with a company jacket on. Um, now I want to give the example that's more recent of this woman, this news editor in Russia, who uh, who who invaded the uh, the space of an anchor on television and held a sign calling for no war, right? So Western media told us that she she was so brave because she did this with the full knowledge that she would be spending the rest of her life in Putin's dungeon dungeon, being tortured on on a on a daily basis. Uh, she was fined about three hundred dollars USD, or I think it was two hundred euros. So I mean, it just speaks to. <laughs> I spent 25 hours in jail, you know, for doing my job and not protesting. So it just speaks to the hypocrisy uh, that's that's on full display right now. Unfortunately, it's all hidden, right? Um, we we get blasted with the with information about this woman protesting, blasted with information that's false about the ghost of Kiev, about all these different fake news scenarios in Ukraine, and the retraction that comes later is viewed by one tenth of the audience. So. Uh, it's it's a real information war being waged on the minds of Western citizens. Well, at least we now know uh, how far we've fallen and therefore how far we've still to go, even to get back to where we were. Alex Rubenstein, thanks very much indeed for joining us.